All right, it's time to rank every main villain from the main Total Drama series. So that's everything except for spin-offs in Redonkulous Race and Total Drama Rama because Total Drama Rama is Total Drama Rama and Redonkulous Race has two main villains working in tandem for the whole show, which can't be said about any other villain on this list and they would have to be ranked together. So I had to even the playing field for the others. Plus it's a different game and the spinoff and it wasn't that good anyways. Also some other notable villains, anti-heroes or antagonistic figures that won't be included are Duncan, Eva, Joe, Lightning, Max, Sugar, Scary Girl, Bowie, and MK. All right, it's time to get in here. Coming in ninth place, the worst villain in Total Drama history is going to be Scarlet from Total Drama Pocket 2 Island. I went with Scarlet over Sugar because she has more villainous moments than Sugar, spent more of the season being painted in a villainous light, while Sugar was kind of like Lightning where she was only a villain for like the final one or two episodes. But even if I went with Sugar, she'd still be in last place. But talking about Scarlet, she is villainous, but her villainous antics rarely ever expanded past Max. Also, they didn't really result in eliminations either, which just lessens her role in the season. For the most part, Scarlet was just going back and forth with Max and actually getting outplayed by Max unintentionally on multiple occasions, just failing to get him out, which makes her less threatening. Even when she became a serious villain, it only lasted for one episode as she was dealt with swiftly. She just didn't impose her will on the season and have much relevance like some other villains were able to, so she's going to rank in ninth place. Amazing character, but she's an awful villain. In eighth place, it's Courtney from Total Drama Action. As an overall character, Courtney is bratty and annoying and whenever she talks, I just want to like grab some earplugs and jam them in my ear so I don't have to hear her whining and complaining so I love that she's not ranking high on this list. The problem with Courtney is that she was barely a villain, just a nuisance. The most villainous thing that she did was make the contestants agree to split some prize money with her in exchange for saving them from a building that was about to explode, which was villainous, but that was her only moment. For the most part, she was a whining, miserable, plot armored god player that either won every challenge because everyone got nerfed to make her look so good or when she didn't win challenges, she got her lawyers involved in the game to help her advance in the game and that's how she caused her eliminations for the most part. There's no strategy to it at all. Courtney only got half a season of quote unquote villainy and it wasn't good because she spent most of her screen time whining and complaining rather than being villainous. So she's gonna land in eighth place. In seventh place, it's Justin, the other half of the total drama action villains. Now Justin, unlike Courtney, was a solid player using his looks to charm Beth and Lindsay into being loyal to him. Also, he technically eliminated Gwent and Izzy, like that's big, getting Gwent out of the game so early. The problem with Justin is that he caused a small amount of eliminations because he's only a villain for the first half of Total Drama Action and he's just boring TV. He doesn't bring any chaos. Like the way that he got contestants eliminated wasn't as entertaining as some others on the list. Also, the fact that he got his villain role taken by Courtney halfway through the season and he flat out got replaced by a similar archetype in World Tour is just extra justification, pun intended, but yeah, extra justification for why he's this low on the list. Getting his role taken by Courtney doesn't mean that she was better, but 
the fact that it happened is just embarrassing and it totally means that Justin failed as a villain. So he's going to rank in seventh place. In sixth place, it's Mal from Total Drama All-Stars. What Mal was able to accomplish on All-Stars was legendary. He caused so much chaos and some eliminations here and there like Cameron and even beating Alejandro and making him look so weak and helpless in his elimination round. Like that's very impressive. Mal is a really good villain, but that's with no context added. My problem isn't with Mal himself. I just hate how everyone had to sink to a Patrick Star IQ level to make Mal possible. Like Alejandro sharing to Mal that he has evidence on him when he would never have done something like that in World Tour. Then there's Zoe and Cameron having obvious signs in front of them that Mike was Mal, but they still didn't believe it. Zoe was never that bright. And Maria was right. She is a bozo. So even though she was extra dumb, it wasn't egregious in this season. But they're trying to convince me that Cameron, the guy that figured out Mike's multiple personality disorder in the previous season, they're trying to convince me that this guy had no idea what was going on until it was too late. Get out of here. And to make things worse, the only person that probably could have done something to combat Mal and Duncan because of the Juvie connection Duncan just had to get himself eliminated in one of the worst eliminations in total drama history. Mal had all of the makings to be a great villain and probably would have been number one if he wasn't going up against such an easy playing field of severely watered down characters. Mal's sixth place ranking isn't on him, it's on the writing of the other characters for sure. In fifth place, it's Heather from Total Drama Island. Just because Heather was the first villain that set the foundation, that doesn't make her the best villain at all. She played the game hard and wasn't afraid to give the show the drama that they were craving for, which is very respectable. But sadly for her, her strategy was garbage. Heather was mean to everyone and ditched allies like Beth and Lindsay way too early and because of this they had to give heather more plot armor than anyone has ever had in total drama history just so she could make it near the end to have someone to root against for the whole season they had to either give her immunity every episode or make up some ridiculous reason for why she stays the episodes hook line and screamer and after the dock of shame come to mind for some reason there was no vote in Hook, Line, and Screamer. DJ automatically got eliminated. Lazy. And in After the Dock of Shame, when she was perfectly set up to leave, everyone just kept on saying, Lashana, Lashana, Lashana. And Chris kept on allowing it to happen. What a garbage host, by the way. Even Lindsay, the person that never got Lashana's name right, always saying stuff like Lafonda and Laquisha. This girl managed to finally say her name right just to make this happen, which was supposed to be a comedic moment and it was, but I just can't ignore how the show flat out doesn't make sense sometimes just to keep Heather in the game. At times, Heather didn't even feel like an actual contestant on the show, like she might as well have been writing the show herself with how picture perfect they made her up until her elimination episode, which was glorious to watch the downfall of this trash character. But yeah, I'm not just going to accept this stuff and not think about it too hard just because she's a villain and it's a kid's show that's actually not even a total kid's show, it's rated TVPG. But no, it's bad writing, so she's going to land in fifth place, which is actually a really generous ranking because with the amount of plot armor that she had, she really could have been last. In fourth place, it's Scott from Total Drama Revenge of the Island, the first solidly good villain on this list. 
Now, I hated this guy in the pre-merge. Some episodes became predictable because of his intentional Matt Singh strategy where he would lose challenges on purpose and he got rid of some really good characters like Don and especially Beverly. That was the big one. But once he got to the merge and there was no more intentional Matt singing and he was actually causing chaos and actually picking off useless characters like Mike and splitting up that couple, that's when Scott became interesting. Although it didn't work out the best for him in future rounds, I've got to say that his actions caused so much drama, which is what the show was about in the first place. It's in the name. The only thing that wasn't the best wasn't necessarily a Scott thing. It was a writer thing where they let their writer's pet Zoe and Cameron outlast him. And they turned Lightning into the villain for the final two episodes when Scott would have been better. But yeah, Scott in his original form is a top tier character, number 4 ranked villain on this list and this is the version that should have been brought back for all stars, give Mal some real competition. In third place and second place, it's the newcomer, Julia from both seasons of the revival. Third place will be Julia's season 1 appearance and second place will be Julia's season 2 appearance. In season 1 of the Total Drama Island revival, Julia was a fun villain to root for but really it all came down to her winning challenges. That's all there was for her for the most part because she wasn't controlling anything like she'll say a few mean things and win some challenges but that's it, while the real game took place around her, with her not really having a say in the contestants that went home. So I love that in season 2, she got more involved in the game. She was meaner, getting into multiple beefs and rivalries in this season, with Nichelle, Damien, and Priya. But she was able to back it up because she came back with the same individual challenge ability and she had a much better strategic game as well that helped her team win some pre-merge challenges and got her further into the game on some votes, like the MK vote. Julia is always going to bring entertainment, which is a big factor, and she dominated the whole game in a way that didn't feel ridiculous at all like some others on the list. She's a villain, but I actually wanted to root for her, which wasn't the case for some of these other villains because it's either their plot armor makes them impossible to root for or they just have a boring or annoying personality. So yeah, the writers wrote Julia well. And yeah, this is one of the few times when they should have experimented with another villain winner. She was the star of the whole revival series and she's in contention for the best total drama character ever made in contention because number one on this villain list also has the case to be the best total drama character ever made. And in first place, there was no question at all, it's Alejandro from Total Drama World Tour. Alejandro had a stranglehold over World Tour, just causing so many eliminations in style, like Bridget getting stuck to a pole is the first one that comes to mind, and there's much more. Alejandro is without a doubt the most strategic player in Total Drama history, and none of this was in a forced plot armor type of way, like the characters in World Tour, some of them had small developments or derailments from their previous seasons, but none of them had to change their whole personality drastically to specifically make Alejandro look better or to make Alejandro work in general. Also, the game didn't have to give Alejandro all of these breaks just to give him more power to get him further in the game, like he's one of the least plot armored characters in all of Total Drama right next to Julia. Every time he survived elimination and every time he eliminated someone made complete and total sense and it didn't mess with the flow of the story that they were trying to tell. Good thing that there's an actual villain ending for Alejandro because he deserved his win for the season that he dominated. And yeah, that's all of the main total drama villains ranked. There's only a few good villains because a good amount of them are boring, more annoying than villainous, or they have insane plot armor. 
the villains as a whole aren't the strongest aspect of the show like there's ways to get better but the ones that they got right are legitimately like top five or top 10 characters in the show so yeah that's all of the main villains ranked and hopefully if total drama gets another season hopefully the next villain can be top tier but yeah that's it 